I'm Paul Sullivan. Since I was a child, I've had sensitivity to and encounters with the paranormal. I've spent over 30 years peering into the darkness of the unknown, immersing myself deep into the strange and the mysterious. Inspired by my own childhood encounters, I started seeking answers by investigating stories of ghosts and haunted locations. My mission has been to document occurrences of paranormal activity and search for the truth about what happens in the dark hours. Just north of Port Perry, Ontario, it's a small plot of farmland. It looks just like any other rural land, but this farm has a tragic history. A history that has left a paranormal legacy. Twice a week, the woman made the three-hour trek to the nearby town. She didn't like to leave the house and her young son, but her errands must be run and her husband had to work the farm fields. Just over the top of the last hill and she would be home. She couldn't get near the house. She was frantic. She looked for her husband and her son. There was no one around. Just a burning house. She walked the path that she'd walked so many times in the past. People say that she was walking the same route over and over as if searching for her husband and son. Then one day, she was not seen again. At least not seen in life. Some claim that she's still searching. The property has been owned by many people over the years. The son of one owner decided to have some friends over for a camp out in the fields. Okay, John, it's your turn. Ooh, tell them the one about the lantern lady. The lantern lady? Yeah, that's a good one. So essentially, about 150 years ago, there was this lady and her house burned down and her husband and her son died in the fire. So they say, she went absolutely crazy and that she would spend her time in the evenings walking back and forth from the town with this lantern. The lantern lady. Yeah, the lantern lady. And uh, you know, the, the cool thing is, the crazy thing is, is that people say that they can still see her walking through the fields around here. From certain angles, there are roads visible from the fields where they were. What's that? There she is. It's a car.
So, I'd say we should call it a night, guys. Good call. It was getting late, so the couples decided to pack it in for the night. Hurry up, John! I am hurrying. What's that? Over there! Let me see. Oh, it's just another car. Yeah, but the road is over there. There was a light, not a car, moving slowly across the fields. Where did it go? There it is. How did it get there? Maybe it's just a firefly. Yeah, that's not a firefly. It would shine, then go out, then reappear. Guys, I don't feel good about this. What the hell? Where'd it go? They had come face to face with the Lantern Lady. They didn't need to see any more. They took off and never camped in those fields again. A few years ago, I visited the farm with another paranormal investigator, Kate. We were eager to find out if there was anything to the story of the Lantern Lady. On our investigation, we were joined by a psychic medium named Robert and his son, Sean. It is sometimes good to have a medium on an investigation to give extra insight that we couldn't get with just our ears and eyes. We also like to ensure that the medium knows as little as possible about the place and what paranormal activity there has been. We began our investigation as most investigations begin, with a walk around the location. This allows us to get a feel for the place. Very often, not much happens on the first walk around on the location, but on this occasion, things started to happen almost immediately. Whoa, I'm getting some K2 activity here. I'm getting the same. We were using K2 meters. They measure EMF or electromagnetic fields. Sometimes that could be from natural or man-made sources, but if you are away from any sources of EMF, like say in a field, there's a good chance that the EMF is caused by something paranormal. Okay. I'm Is there anyone here with us? We explained to whatever spirit we were dealing with that the closer it comes to us, the more the lights will light up. If there's anyone here with us, if you come close, the lights will flash. We could communicate if the spirit could make the lights flash. I'm getting the same. We asked yes or no questions. We told the spirit to make the lights flash once for no, twice for yes. If that's you, come closer. Robert, are you sensing anything? Nothing yet. Did you used to live near here? Do you know why you're out here? Yes. 
No. Wait, no. Are you out here for a reason? Oh, what is that? Do you smell that? Oh, yeah. The presence of a spirit can sometimes manifest itself through smell. We were suddenly smelling a strong, unpleasant smell all around us. It smells like... B.O. Oh, it's horrible. It's not me. I promise you guys it's not me. I had a shower this morning. It's gone. It smells gone. We're gonna head back up to the top now. If you want to communicate with us later, we'll come back. Are you okay? Hey, buddy. It turned out that Sean was very sensitive to spirits, but this was the first time that he had been affected like this. What is it? It's her. It's her. She's talking to Sean. What's she saying? What is she saying? Come on, keep talking, Sean. She, she wants us to leave her alone. It's okay. Take deep breaths. Deep breaths. She'll talk to you nicely. She's sad. She's very sad. Why is she sad? I don't know. Do you know her name? Can you ask her what her name is? Jane. Her name is Jane. Jane? That's the first name that popped into my head. What else did she tell you? She's just really sad. Really sad. We had not told Sean or Robert about the story of the Lantern Lady, so Sean would not have known why this spirit might be sad. Can you sense anything, Robert? No, not, not yet. Nothing beyond the vague sadness. <laughs> Despite his father being a psychic medium, this was the first time anything like this had happened to Sean. The experience was a bit too much for him, so he decided to leave the field for a while. We had a break and decided to return to the field once it was dark. Robert thought it would be a good idea for Sean to sit this one out, so he stayed behind in the car. I think this is the spot. I'm already getting a little bit on the K2. Are you here with us? I'll take that as a yes. We're sorry if we upset you earlier. We came back to see if we could help. Can we talk to you for a little bit? Thank you. You were communicating with our friend Sean earlier. You said you were sad. We're really only here to learn who you are and see if we can help. Are you here with us? Yeah, I don't understand. We were just getting like huge hits a minute ago. Is your name Jane? My name's Kate, this is Paul, and this is Robert. Where did Robert go? He was here with us. What? Robert? 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 Is that him? Robert. Robert, are you okay?
Robert, are you okay? What was that? I heard that too. It smells back. Oh, oh my God, it is. What was that? It sounds like footsteps. You stay with Robert. I'm gonna go look and see what that is. Wait, seriously? You'll be okay. I'm not there. Paul. Robert? Jane? I'm here. My baby's not down there. Baby? You have a baby? It appeared that somehow Robert was channeling the spirit of Jane. She was talking through him. Baby? You have a baby? He died. How did your baby die? He burned. What happened? My house. The whole thing. The whole thing burned. Do you know how it happened? I don't know. I was away. I should have been there. Where were you? I had to do my chores. My baby's gone. What was your baby's name? Teddy. His name was Teddy. It's a nice name. It is. My husband was supposed to take care of him. I don't know why he didn't. They say that he burned in the house, but nobody saw him. I can't find him. Have you seen him? No. I can't find him. I can't find Teddy. Is that why you're out here? I've been looking. You miss him. Jane, do you know what year it is? No, I don't. I have to go. Thank you for talking to us. Thank you. We're really sorry about your son. As soon as the conversation ended, Kate completely broke down into tears. Robert was back. We explained what had happened, that he channeled the spirit of Jane. He had very little memory of it. We were just really sorry about your son. I'm really sorry you lost your son. I'm really sorry. I feel tingly. I don't know. What happened? She's holding you right now. She has her arms around you. I can feel it. That was the first time I had actually been with a medium that channeled a spirit through them. It was a really interesting experience. <laughs>